It's time for baseball on MLB Network. Today, game three of this four-game series between the San Diego Padres and the Houston Astros. With Dan Plezak and Mark DeRosa and Dan, two big-time power arms featured in this one. Yeah, Matt, we've got a couple of right-handers that can bring the noise here. Both of these guys, big power arms. Philo plays in the game of baseball. Also, a good assortment of breaking pitches. If these two guys are on, I think you're going to see a lot of swings and misses in this ballgame. It's Interleague Baseball on MLB Network. Lance McCullers, a right-hander from Florida, gets the ball as the starter here. What's your take on him, Dan? Hey, this guy's done a real good job on the year keeping the opponent's batting average down. Both righties and lefties coming into this one, hitting under 250 against this guy. He's been good all season long. Into the box, Tommy Pham. And we are ready for some daytime baseball. Wheels and deals, here's the first pitch. And look out! Boy, an auspicious way to begin our ball game here this afternoon. Fellas, taking a look at these Astros entering play here this afternoon. They dropped another one last time out, and in fact, they've won just twice First in their three. last eight tries. Yeah, Matty B, we've got a team here that's been playing some pretty good baseball. They're not quite in first place yet, d -Row, but they're playing good, and they'd like to stay competitive through the month of May. Yeah, they've played okay. Let's be honest. They've hit okay. They've pitched okay. They're capable of much better than this, but it's early. We find ourselves just in the early phases of May. Ride it out and find a way to get hot. So one out and nobody aboard, and that'll bring up Jake Cronenworth. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Changed up on him here, and this is grounded to short. Reined in. And the off balance throw gets him. Nice play for the out. Next up is Fernando Tatis Jr. And as you check out his righty lefty splits, no surprise that he hits better against southpaws than he does against right handers. First offering on its way. There's a good breaking ball as it gets the bottom of the zone. Past meetings against Lance McCullers. He's one for three. Hit out towards second. Altuve has it. On to the first baseman Guriel, and that will end the inning. Padres down in order. Now the Astros will get their first opportunity. No score. You Darvish gets the start for San Diego in this one. Dan, any thoughts? Hey, this guy's had a really solid season. And what shows me that more than anything? Solid three to one strikeout to walk ratio. And if he continues to do that, he'll pitch really well in this one. Well, up to the plate next will be Jose Altuve. And there's a look at his home and road splits so far this year. First pitch coming, here it is. Pitch taken, several inches below the zone, in fact. Guys, these Padres, as they take the field this afternoon, they come in playing well. Six and three over the last nine ball games, including a victory last time out. Yeah, Matty B, we've got a team here that's been playing some pretty good baseball. They're not quite in first place yet, d -Row, but they're playing good, and they'd like to stay competitive through the month of May. Yeah, they... Now, meanwhile here, this ball's hit fairly well down that left field line, and it's going to stay fair. It's a home run. So it's a solo home run to lead off the bottom of the first. Home run number five on the year, and the Astros take a one to nothing lead. Yeah, we always talk about how important it is to spot your starter or run or two early in the game, and he does just that. Blasting a no-doubt bomb that serves notice. They're going to be swinging with the wood here. No better way to get the home crowd into it right out of the gates. Lined hard to center field. Grisham is under it to make the catch for route number one. Batting third, the designated hitter, Yordan. 
Alvarez. That'll bring up Jordan Alvarez. First shot for him here. Two hits in five trips a night ago. He's set. Here it comes. Turned on that one and crushed it. Just pulled it a little foul. Darvish has compiled over 65 innings of work and with an ERA just hovering around the 3.00 benchmark. One out, nobody on. And he misses with it, one and one. And there are our umpires for this one. Working balls and strikes will be Mr. Daryl Parker. Well, Dero, Daryl Parker behind the dish, and you never really know what you're going to get from this guy. Yeah, sometimes, and I'd hate to be mean and say he flips a coin back there because that's not the case. But as an offensive player, you have to find a consistent zone. You just can't. Two balls and a strike now. He's fallen behind now, three and one. Good job to work the count and put himself back in the driver's seat. Started off with one strike, and now he's got the count in his favor, three and one. The three one. And the cutter can't find the zone as he surrenders the base on balls here. Wow, if that's not a strike, I don't know what is. Cool. I know these subs the have a tough baseline. job. I get it. Alex. We'll see if he gets the next borderline right call or if there are any makeup calls coming up. So now into the box is Alex Bregman. One in, one out, and one on here in the inning. First offering. Inner third let go. It's a called strike. Alvarez leads off first with one away. Counts even one and one to Alex Bregman. Count is one and two now. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Two two pitches fouled away. Little dribbler up the first baseline. That winds up foul. Runners on first with one down. And now here's a ball hit pretty well out toward right center field. Center fielder on the run. He gets there, and that's the second out. So it's a runner at first with two gone. And in to hit next will be the outfielder, Kyle Tucker. From the stretch. Swing and a miss, and he's behind 0-1. Put that in the memory bank. First time he breaks out a curveball right there, and it's a pretty good one. And he falls behind 0 and 2. A runner on first with two away. And look out as that one ran in and got him. Yeah, there's no question that this one got away from him. He was cruising, had him down 0-2 with two man. outs, and he's going to be pretty team. unhappy with that. You Going never want to give an offense new life in an inning. Now the Cuban import, Yuli Gurriel, as he'll take a look at ball one. Head to head numbers with you, Darvish. A number of meetings, he's one for seven. Two men are on with two men out. Popped up. And Hosmer will just look this one in, and the inning is over.
but they're off to a good start as they pick up a run on this solo shot. Second inning coming up. It's now 1-0 Houston. Second inning set to go, and standing in now the always dangerous third baseman Manny Machado. Here's the first pitch. As he'll take a look at ball one. Well, fans of good pitching are in for a treat today. What can we expect from today's matchup, guys? I know everyone loves the long ball, Matty, but this is why I pay the price of a ticket right here. Two of the game's best, two of the hardest throwers competing at the top of their game. Dan, you have to love this stuff. You know, Dero, we thought coming into this one it was going to be a low-scoring affair. Both of these pitchers look like they're locked in early, and runs are going to be really difficult to come by. They both look like they're on point so far. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Swung on and missed. He didn't even come close to contact on a ball way out of the zone. One out. I think he had his mind made up. He was swinging the bat and trying to protect before the ball even left the pitcher's hand. That pitch wasn't even close. He would have needed a flagpole to hit that one. First baseman Eric Hosmer is in. Nope. Ball one. And he comes in as a player to watch out for, hitting well over 300 on the season. The 1 0. Ball and two strikes. You have to find a way to lay off that low sinker. There is just no way to do any damage. You're just looking at either a bruised shin or a ground out to the left side. Swing and a miss on the changeup, and there are two gone. Well, there's the great equalizer, the changeup, El Cambio. Listen, if you can keep that pitch in your back pocket and pull it out when you need it, like he did right there, usually hitters, they don't stand a chance. That'll bring up Austin Nola. As the first pitch to him is in there for a called strike one. Past meetings against Lance McCullers, he's one for three. The wind up and the 0 1. Late decision to swing that time, and as a result, it's 0 and 2. I know this guy has a lot of weapons on the mound, but what makes him so successful is that he's aggressive in the zone, getting ahead, forcing action. Two out, nobody on. And he looks at a ball, one and two. It's a two and two count to the Padres catcher. This one misses, and that'll fill the count here. Three and two with two away. Boy, went from being in the driver's seat to now being in some trouble. Had the count 0 and 2, started nipping at the corners, and the next thing you know, this count stands at 3 and 2. Waved at and missed for the third out. Not much of a chance at hitting that one, and the inning is over. Three up, three down for San Diego. It remains 1 0. Now to the plate, Aledmus Diaz. He's set to lead off the home half of the second. The left fielder, Aledmus Diaz. First pitch on the way. Weak grounder back to the mound. And quickly, there's one down to lead off the frame. Batting eight. The catcher, Jason. Castro. Jason Castro, the catcher, is in.
Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. Castro. Bats left but throws right and stands in at six foot three. This is his tenth season at the major league level, so almost a decade, which is quite an accomplishment. Yeah, Maddie, you ain't kidding right there. Ten years, we refer to that in the biz as hitting full pension. 2 0 oh now. Now pitch on the way. Two balls and a strike. All even now, two and two. A great pitch there as he couldn't get extended on that one, and he's down on strikes for the second out. Just tied him up with that last pitch. That Pretty done. evident by the swing. Sometimes stop. guys get in that Carlos. protect mode so much that Go they're swinging Rhea. at everything that they see, and they end up offering at pitches that they can't possibly do anything with. Here's Carlos Correa now. As the first pitch to him is taken low and away for ball one. Head to head numbers with you Darvish. He's three for 15. He's also been a strikeout victim six times. Ready with the 1 0 pitch. Popped up. Tatis is camped under this one. As he tucks this one away to retire the side. One, two, three, go the Astros. We play two innings. It's one to nothing. Back now in Houston, home of the Astros, who've certainly treated their fans to some impressive pitching so far this year. With one of the best team ERAs in the league, it's pretty clear they command a lot of attention and praise. Before the game, one pitcher told me that he thinks their success comes in large part due to their strikeout abilities, a category where they also rank near the top of the league. He said, even when we do get ourselves into trouble, most of us can dial up a strikeout and help get ourselves out of it. And that makes a huge difference over the course of a season. Power arms and nasty stuff. Apparently, that is the key to pitching, guys. All right. Thanks, Heidi. First delivery to him. As he'll take a look at ball one. The offense better get it going right here because they certainly can tell from their dugout. This guy is carrying himself with a presence out on the mound. He's got feel for all his pitches. A bouncer to the left side. Throw to first in time and the leadoff man is gone to start the third. And with that let's take a moment to show you what's happening in the American League's Western Division. Grisha. Next, it'll be Trent Grisham. Infield shifted well to the right. Here's the first pitch, and he fouls this one off. Now the 0 1. Off the plate, one ball, one strike. I got a ball, one strike. And here's a pitch swung on and missed, one and two now. Jurickson Profar will pinch hit here and finish the at bat following the injury. And he lays off a pitch outside as they draw even at two and two. Full count now three and two. Well you don't see it all that often but this might be a good time for a three two change. 
If he can locate it, it's nearly impossible to hit. Now a swing and a miss here as he's down on strikes. So it's two up, two down to begin the third. Wow, this guy's mowing right through this lineup right now. But that's what happens when you don't get a chance to see a pitcher very often. That's one of the things that are helpful when you're pitching in interleague games. It's always a good advantage for the pitcher because the hitters don't get to see that guy very often. In now, Brian O'Grady as the sinker to him finds the zone for strike one. Padre still with the big goose egg in the hit column thus far. Barely able to make contact down 0 and 2 now. And another foul ball. The next 0 2. Wastes a pitch on the knuckle curve there, 1 and 2. And it's two balls and two strikes now. Man, this at bat has changed quickly from 0 and 2 now to 2 and 2. A good job of plate discipline by this hitter, not chasing those pitches just off the plate. Into the windup and the pitch. And he misses this one inside, and that'll run things full three and two. Got to be frustrating for the guy out on the mound trying to get out of this inning. Had him down 0 2, and now he's worked the count back full. Still one pitch away from sitting in the dugout. Now the payoff pitch home. And he nope. takes ball four. So a good job out of the nine hole and getting on base as we go back to the top of the order. They haven't been able to register a hit against this guy, but at least they have a base runner here. We'll see if that leads to something. So it's back to the top of the order now. And up next, it'll be the outfielder, Tommy Pham. Comes set. Here's the nothing and nothing pitch. As he'll take a look at a pitch too low, it's ball one. Lifted in the air out to center field. And as it turns out, the two out walk doesn't come around to haunt him as that ends the inning. One left for San Diego. They're on the short end of a one to nothing score. Jurickson Profar will stay in the ball game as he takes over in center. Back to the top of the order now, and striding in the speedy second baseman Jose Altuve. He turned around that fastball and drove it out of the park in his previous at bat. So there's got to be a good chance they mix it up right here on him and try and go off speed. Now here it comes. That's a ball. The 1 0 home hit the other way out toward right field. Myers is under it. One down. The bat. Next here is Miles Straw hit it hard but lined out in his first at bat. Yeah he hit it hard that's all you can ask you can't control the result sometimes Matty just unlucky with the placement. He set and the pitch and a half hearted swing there as he tried to go the other way and it's strike one. Man that's another ugly swing right there. This team is just struggling so mightily to get on base they've looked off balance all game. That one bends into the zone a strike on the breaking ball. Hey I don't blame him for giving up on that curveball. That was a rainbow coming out of the sky stole a strike. Grounded weakly down the line toward third but a foul ball and the count holds it 0 and 2. Nothing in two count and the pitch stung into the gap in right center for what should be extra bases. He's through first and hustling for second. And he'll pull into second with one away. 
everyone knows that this guy's numbers are not where he wants them to be so far this year, but you never know by that swing. He looked fluid and confident driving that pitch for a double. We'll see if that gets him going a bit. Stepping in now, Jordan Alvarez. He'll swing and lift a ball foul off to the left and out of play. 289 is the average coming in. 14 homers and 34 driven in. Oh, and one count and the pitch. In the dirt here. Strong, the runner at second with one away. Try to hold back, but he won't be able to as that's ruled a swing, and there are two away now. Fool him just enough with that pitch to get him to go around, according to the umpire. Sometimes it can be really tough for these big, strong guys because once they're committed to swinging, it's hard for them to slow their swings down, and that appeared to be the case there. Wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch. As he'll take a look at ball one. Lined hard toward right center. That gets down. He's got himself a base hit. Long throw to the plate. And not in time as the run scores. The tag, and they'll get him at second. And with that, the side is retired. Astros forced to settle for only the one run. On now to the top of inning number four. Houston leads this one two to nothing. And at the plate is Jake Cronenworth. Grounder down the line at third. Bregman has it. And a close play at first, but a great stretch that time as they get him by a step for out number one. The football, Fernando Tatis Jr. And that'll bring up Fernando Tatis Jr. He's 0 for 1 after grounding out in his only trip to the plate so far. Yeah, I understand that, Matty, but this guy's got burner wheels down the first baseline. I don't think he even concerns himself with that. He has to put it on the ground. That's part of what makes him successful. A ball and a strike. That's not a pitch he misses very often. He knows he should have done something with that one. Out in front there as this one's pulled off to the left side. The one two. A swing and a drive sent out toward the gap. A ball that's carrying. On the warning track he makes the catch. So here's the cleanup hitter, Manny Machado, struck out in his last trip to the plate. First pitch of the AB on its way. Easy take there on the sinker, well off the outside. This one's outside, quite a bit off the plate that time. Like to see him be looking to the opposite field with this next swing. Pitcher's trying to work you away. Outside and low, 3 and 0. Oh. I'd be shocked if this wasn't a four pitch walk right here. He doesn't want to mess around and leave something over the heart of the plate and get beat in this situation. 3 and 1. Got to believe he had the green light in that situation. Two outs, 3 0 oh count. This guy can certainly handle the bat. That's a perfect situation to let him loose. But I love the fact that he's key holding a certain area, and it wasn't what he was looking for. He's under it, and that ends the inning. Padres down in order. They're down two to nothing. Ready to go for the last half of the inning, and in to hit next will be the outfielder Kyle Tucker. 
I'm interested to see how focused their ABs will be playing with this lead. I think this needs to be a little bit of a smell blood inning. Keep the fire rolling. I know it's early, but keep the pressure going. Swinging the bat's nice. One ball, no strikes to count. Now the 1-0. One and one. And he misses low here, so the count goes to three and one. Yuli Guriel will be next. The three and one pitch. Taken, strike two. Three and two. A bouncer to the left side, taken in by Machado. And the throw on the first will take care of him. So he's thrown out by the only man standing on the left side of the infield. One away. Couldn't have been much closer at first. And his show track will demonstrate for us. It took a throw of over 90 miles an hour just to beat the hustling runner. Really an amazing show of arm strength on that play. So here's Yuli Gurriel as he'll take a look at a strike right down the middle. It's 0 and 1. 0 for 1 after a pop out in foul territory his first time through. A ball and a strike to count to the Astros' first baseman. Two runs, three hits, no errors in the ballgame for the Astros to this point. Hit in the air out toward left. And this is hauled in just shy of the track out there for out number two. So stepping in is Aledmus Diaz. He bounced out last time up. First pitch on its way as he'll take a look at ball one. High with the cut fastball and he's behind two and zero. Oh. It's a lot easier to hit when you're putting yourself in good hitters counts. This guy's done a great job not swinging at pitchers pitches and when he's getting the ball in the zone he's getting the barrel to it. He's been hot lately. Three and oh now. Pitch on the way. And this one misses inside a ball. He walked him, and they've got themselves a two out base runner. Now batting. The catcher. So now here is Jason Castro, man at first after the two out walk. From the belt, the pitch. In the dirt. And he is in there. They couldn't get him at second. And that'll hurt as the runner will move into scoring position now. Well, the graphic here isn't going to properly show just how far that pitch was from the strike zone. That thing wasn't even close, and I think it made the decision to move up a base pretty easy to make. Just missing here, 2-0. and oh. Now, you can see he's working around this guy right here. Why not? First base is open. Walk wouldn't be the worst thing in this spot. Two balls and a strike. Diaz at second with two down. A two and two count to the Astros catcher. 
He's going to have to set his sights a little lower right there. That pitch was able to get by him. His swing was just a little under that one. Tough curveball that time, but he's able to make a little contact to keep this at bat going. He's set. Here's the 2 2. And this one runs in on him as he can't get his arms extended. A great pitch there, and the inning is over. One left for Houston. They're up two to nothing. Welcome back. Heidi Watney standing by as we get set for the top of the fifth. Matt, I talked with San Diego's manager during the inning break about the Padres' offensive production to this point. And he told me, overall, he's not happy with the at-bats they're putting together. They've only managed one base runner in this game, so it's easy to see why he said they haven't shown much fight today. He's hoping to see someone step up and find a way to get something going, though. This game isn't out of hand, so it remains to be seen if they can snap out of this funk and climb back into this one. All right, Heidi, thank you. The first baseman. All set for the start of the Eric. inning. And standing in, here's the first baseman, Eric Hosmer. Now here's the pitch. And that's cut on and missed 0 and 1. A ball and a strike to the Padres' first baseman. Even at a ball and a strike, here's the pitch. And this is low, ball two, two and one. Now a changeup is bounced to second. Altuve fields it cleanly, and the fifth inning will start with a ground out, one away. Next, it'll be Austin Nova. He went down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah, but it was a good changeup, Matty. Good arm action on that pitch. Look for him to try and stay back a little bit more. Let the ball get a little deeper. Don't be shocked if this pitcher tries to rush a heater right here. The wind up and the 0 1. I love a well executed changeup, especially one down in the zone. The only problem throwing it in that situation, you leave that belt high or miss your spot just a hair, and you could have some problems. Breaking ball swung on in the dirt. Castro gathers, and he makes the throw to first. Nola is retired, two down now. The right field, number four. Now to bat, Will Myers grounded out in his last at bat. Yeah, Matty, and it looked like a sinker in his last A.B. that got him to roll over. Kind of similar situation right here. Similar stuff on the mound. Look for them to try and get him to do exactly the same thing as his last A.B. He's got to fight to get it elevated just a little bit more. And he falls behind now, 2-0. Out in front here is this one scorched foul to the left. The 2 1 home. Seared down the first baseline, but this will wind up a foul ball. 2 and 2. Into the windup and the pitch. Ground ball sent back up the middle. There is Altuve. On to the first baseman, Guriel, and that will end the inning. Three up, three down for San Diego. They trail it here two to nothing. Set now for the bottom of the fifth and stepping up as the shortstop Carlos Correa. Carlos Correa. First pitch on its way. The 0 1. Outside for a ball, 1 and 1. One and two now as that one's fouled off. 
The pitch. Swing and a miss, and he'll start the fifth the same way he ended the fourth with a punch out, one away. Good job of making him chase a pitch for the strikeout there. The yeah, Matt, that's man. the advantage of getting Post ahead in the count. You can really force oh, hitters to expand their zone and protect. And when they're in that mode, getting them to go after a pitch they can't do much with becomes a lot easier. Here's the second baseman, Jose Altuve, as he'll take a called strike here on a borderline pitch at strike one. He's one for two in this one. A one pitch on its way. Now Altuve connects. Deep left field. And that one is gone. Second home run of the game right there. He is locked in at the plate. You hear so many of today's players talk about rhythm and timing. Well, he is perfectly on time in the heart of the zone. Now batting, number three. At the plate, Miles Straw. As he'll take a look at a slider here that misses for ball one. A hit and two tries for him so far. Astro center fielder ahead with a 2 0 count. I'd be real surprised if he goes back out away there on the mound. This is a count for a fastball challenge, and we'll see if he's ready for it in the box. And he'll lay the fastball in here to get the count back to two and one. Although he doesn't use that pitch too much, if he's able to steal some strikes early in the count, could be something they have to think about. Inside for a ball as he falls behind to him here, three and one. Bases are empty, one man out. And it's up to a 3 2 full count now. Skied into straightaway right. Under it is Myers, and there are two away now. The batter. Now with the plate four. is Jordan Alvarez. Hitter, Jordan Alvarez. From the stretch, here's the pitch. Oh, and one count, and the pitch. A bouncer to the left side. Machado has it. Throw cleanly into first, and that ends the inning. Astros get a run here, courtesy of the solo homer. We're through five here this afternoon. It's now 3-0 Houston. New inning set to get underway. And coming forward, the veteran outfielder, Jurickson Profar. Ready to deliver. Here comes the first pitch. Into the windup, here comes the 0 and 1. Thought about it, but he holds up on the knuckle curve 1 and 2. This one's outside, quite a bit off the plate that time. And he struck him out. So he's down on strikes for the second time this afternoon. He's racking up a fair amount of strikeouts now out there. That's sixth at this point. So he's got good stuff, and he's fooling a lot of these hitters.
Into the box now, Brian O'Grady. As the first pitch misses high and inside for ball one. Grounded back up the middle. He's got it. And there's out number two. When the guy in the mound is working on a no no this late, every play is exciting and stressful for the fielders. We'll see if they can continue making the plays behind him. Next to dig in, Tommy Pham flew out last time up. First pitch of the AB now. Off the plate, ball one. Good breaking ball there laid off for the second strike. Oh, that pitch tells me this guy's feeling frisky right now. He's on. He's got everything working. Breaking ball and he gets him to chase it in the dirt. Castro has it and the throw to first ends the inning. Padres down in order. They trail in this one three nothing. So the call's gone out for the right hander Mark Melanson as he'll take over on the mound. Bottom of the sixth inning now, and that'll bring up the LSU product, Alex Bregman. Alex Bregman. First offering on its way. Up and the 0-2 pitch. And a good two-strike pitch, but he misses high one and two. Padres are going to get something going out in the bullpen now as a left-hander has stood up to throw. The one-two. Popped him up. Tatis is underneath this one. One gone. The right fielder, number 30. Now into the box, Not Kyle all. Tucker. He's 0 for 1 thus far. Infield in the overshift here. Now the pitch. Splitter here, and it's taken for strike one. Here comes the 0 1. Look out as this bat shatters on impact. On to first, but it's too late as the first base umpire says they just missed getting him at the bag. Stepping up is Yuli Guriel. It's been an 0 for 2 effort for him to this point. First pitch of the AB on its way. Little slide step action there, Dan. Yeah, he's clearly thinking about the steal right here. Didn't happen, but the cat mouse game continues on. A high strike there, and it's one and one. Runner goes for second, and this one's in the dirt. And that's going to wipe away the possibility of a double play as the runner moves into second. The one two. And all oh, that 
gets him on the mound. No chance to recover and let's hope he's okay out there. Now has no left fielder. Oh let him. He has. And that'll bring up a lead Miss Diaz. As the first pitch misses to him, it's ball one. 0 for 1 for him here in this one. Nope. And that one misses badly. It's ball two. Great chance right here as a hitter to be really aggressive. With two guys already on, pretty good shot. He's going to get a challenge pitch right here. Two well count, the pitch is laid off, but in there for strike one. That's how you open up the outside part of the plate. Pound two balls in, and then get right back outside. Nice pitch. Now a pitch runs in on him here, and all he can do is flare one foul off to the right side. Here now the 2-2. Two -two. I don't think he can afford another base runner here, so whatever pitch he feels best about, whichever one he feels most comfortable with, that's the one I expect him to turn to. The 3-2 pitch. Count remains full. Line drive snagged on a short hop. On to Hosmer, a double play, and that ends the inning. Astros leave one, but they're on top by a count of three to nothing. Seventh inning ready to roll, and that'll bring in the second baseman, Jake Cronenworth. On its way is pitch number 75, as the first pitch to him runs a bit inside for ball one. Now it's 2 0. Oh. Chopper to short. He's right there. And the throw to first is in time, so the leadoff man is gone here to start inning number seven. Up next is Fernando Tatis Jr. No hits for him to this point, not unlike many of his fellow teammates. Wheels and deals. Here's the first pitch. Good pitch on the black. That was the sinker for a strike. This is why the manager pencils these guys in in the middle of the order. Big spot. Time for them to get back in this game with a couple quality ABs. Behind 0-2 now. Nothing in two count and the pitch. No runs, no hits, no errors in the ball game for the Padres. Into the corner and slicing foul. The 0-2 once more. Every ball club has that spark plug guy, and this is the guy right here. He usually ignites a lot of productive innings. Here comes the 1-2. Now a swing as he stays alive as this is fouled back right off the catcher's arm. Hmm. Now another one two. Again he sends it out of play. Hey this is a heck of a battle right here. Long A.B. You know what? They find themselves still facing the starter. If they would have had some A.B.s like this earlier in the game. I, I, I think they get into the bullpen by this time. Ready on one and two. I love these grinder at bats right here. Kind of a la Wade Boggs in the early 80s where he would just foul off strikes that he didn't want to hit and wait for that pitch he was certainly sitting on and drive it off the monster. 
This one's down to third. Bregman fields it cleanly. And the throw pulls the first baseman off the bag, and he's safe at first. The third baseman. And that's what speed does for you. He made the play, but in the back of his mind, he knew he was dealing with the speedster, so he rushed the throw, and he had more time than he thought, too. Here's Manny Machado now as he takes a cold strike at the knees. It's 0 1. Hey, sometimes you have to look at it like it's not how or how many. Pitching very well into this one into the late innings, and his first pitch strike percentage less than 50%. He'd like it to be a lot higher than that. He's making it very difficult on himself, but he's still getting outs. One pitch. That's a strike to throw down. He is well behind the play. That's an easy stolen base. That's pretty savvy base running, right? A lot of pitches don't throw over twice in a row, so I think he was going on first movement, and it worked out nicely. One out and a runner on second base. Wastes a pitch on the knuckle curve there, one and two. Checks his swing here, but he does so in time. Hey, that's not an easy pitch to hold your swing up. I know it looked like it was way off the plate. Good job not swinging at it. Still two and two. Working for the punch out and the offering. Fly ball out toward right field. Tucker waits on it and he brings it in for the second out of the inning. Eric Hosmer to the plate now. He hits with two away as they continue to trail in this close game. Well, Matt, this has been a big inning on the mound. He's had to face the middle of the order, and so far he's held them at bay. Yeah, this feels like the kind of inning we'll look back on at the end of the game, even if the result of it changes dramatically here. First pitch on its way. Tatis stands at second with two gone. That misses wide. One ball and one strike. Very impressive outing so far. His command has been spot on. Even when he misses his spot, it isn't out over the heart of the plate. He's throwing quality pitches. Opposite field to left. Diaz gets there for the catch, and that ends the inning. Padres leave one, still down three nothing. Emilio Pagan will take over on the mound to start the bottom of the seventh. Now at the plate, Jason Castro. He was sat down on strikes in his last at bat. Yeah, Matty, big time K last time up, and it's been a tough series for him so far. You can tell he's just not seeing the ball off this team. Let's see if he can make an adjustment right here. Good swing. Just got to try and straighten that one out. Oh, he definitely broke the plane there as he went after the pitch inside, and it's strike two. Here's the pitch. One ball, two strikes. Lifted the other way to left center. Fam arranged to his left as he tracks this one down in left center for the first down. The batter, number one, 
Next to hit is Carlos Correa. Lifetime against this pitcher. He's just two for nine. He also has one home run. Ready with the first pitch. Here it comes. Now the 1 0. One out, nobody on. And this will be fouled away. Now a swing and a softly hit ground ball. Another one sent foul. Another one two delivery. Oh, a fastball swung on and missed, and for the second time today, he's gone on strikes. He put up a pretty good battle at the plate right there. They finally get him on a one and two pitch, but you could see that he wasn't laying down without a fight. He really made the pitcher earn that strikeout. Jose Altuve stands in looking for home run number three right here as you see what he's done so far in this one. First offering in there strike one. Hey find a way right here. Two outs. This guy has come in throwing bullets. If he can get this team into the dugout right here with another donut and they regroup, start passing the baton a little bit, we got ourselves some action. And therefore, it is pro far, and Jurickson has it to retire the side. Astros go down one, two, three. They lead it three to nothing. Ready to begin the eighth, and next to hit is the catcher, Austin Nova. Austin Nova. First pitch on its way. Now a good pitch around the knees, but it doesn't quite catch the bottom of the zone. Now action in the bullpen as their closer starts to get loose out there. Well off the inside that time as the sinker misses for a ball. And there's a swing and a miss. Two and one now. Time to be alert for signs of tiring here in the eighth. He's a pitch away from 100. Man, I love this right now. He's giving it everything he has. Oh, and he overshoots his first baseman as it's over his head. And now, oh, this ball's going to wind up out of play. And a big mistake there. You know, a part of me wants to applaud him for staying with it and making the throw, but after he bobbled, he should have just eaten the ball and lived the fight another day. As it is, he gets tagged with an error, and a man is on base. Here's Will Myers. As he'll take a look at a pitch too low. It's ball one. He's 0 for 2 in the ball game so far. Myers awaiting the 1 0. Well, he's thrown a lot of pitches in this one, but it's not like he's walking a bunch of guys. Only one free pass to this point, but they're still making him work really hard. To the right side and through a base hit. And they'll get it in quickly. It's first and third now with nobody out. Hey, this might be their best opportunity to at least get on the board. They've been struggling offensively, and they find themselves with two runners on board. Let's see if they can continue it. 
Here comes the Astros skipper up out of the Houston dugout. And a change is in the offing as that'll be all for his starter this afternoon. So he'll head for the showers as he stands to win this one if the bullpen can find a way to protect his three run lead. New pitcher coming on now as we'll get a look at the side armor Joe Smith. Here's Jerickson Profar. He represents the potential tying run if he can launch one or find a way around the bases. Yeah, Matt, I kind of doubt he's thinking about going yard, even though that would be the best result they could hope for. He's not a long ball threat, and he knows it, so he could just be looking for some way to keep that line moving. Now the first pitch. As he'll pop this one foul off to the left and out of play. Wow, the Padres have been scuffling so far. They need to get a big hit, and it's about time somebody comes through right about now. Set to deliver the 0-1. A little bit low that time, maybe outside as well. Runners at the corners here, nobody out. And he takes a cold strike two. Yeah, Matt, you see the same pitch three times in a row and you find yourself down one and two in the count. Your head starts to get on a swivel here. Is he coming back with it four times or do I have to sit on something else? Got him. And that's the third time we've written a K next to his name in this one. It's been a really rough day for this lineup. There's really no other way to say it. Not a lot of good scoring opportunities. And when they've had them, like right now, it's just been an uphill battle for them to make anything positive happen. At the plate now, Brian O'Grady. This will take a look at a slider that can't make it back to the corner. It's ball one. Runners are at first and third, one away. Two balls and no strikes to the Padres' DH. He's got a couple of pitches to deal with right here, but he's starting to lose command of his pitches. It might be time to take a step back and try to refocus on making some good pitches. Too far out in front that time. He can't keep it fair. Two and one. From the belt, kicks and deals. Sent foul again, and after being way ahead, now it's even at two and two. Hoping to send him packing. Pitch on its way. And he takes ball three, so it's a full count now. Well, he really needs to make this guy swing the bat right here. He's not the type of hitter you want to dance around with. Oh, and a huge strikeout there as he certainly does his job out of the pen. And we'll see how they go after the next guy here. Well, I'm glad we get another look at that beauty of a pitch right there. You can't spot a sinker in a better location because even if you do get the bat on the ball, there's not a whole lot you can do with that textbook sinker. Digging in next, Tommy Pham. And, Dan, this could be a real make-or-break situation at this point in the game. Yeah, Matt, at least scoring one run in this inning is so important to them to possibly get back into this thing. Baseball doesn't have a clock, but you only have 27 outs to work with. They're running out of those pretty quick. First pitch of the A.B. now. Fouled off. The 0 1 pitch. Swing and a miss on the slider, and he's quickly behind, nothing in two. So back to back sliders for strikes. Does he come back with yet another? Hey, that's back to back. But we'll have to press pause as that strike three to retire the side. Padres leave a pair. They trail it here, three to nothing. Matt Strom will come on in relief as he'll make his second appearance of the season so far. Stepping in once again is Miles Straw. He flew out in his last A.B. The center fielder, number three. Ready to deal. Here comes the first pitch. Now a fastball on the inside corner, and he takes a look at strike one. And 
and it's fouled away. Two quick strikes, and now the 0 2. Too high. One and two. If I'm in the box, you take a step out right here. Take a deep breath after that high fastball. You got to be leery of him burying something in the dirt. And that misses two and two. The bouncer to the left side. And the leadoff man in the inning will get the job done here. It's an infield single. Hey, I can only take you inside the mind of the batter right here. Had a lot of swinging bunts in my day. As soon as that ball hits the dirt in front of you, you are getting it down the first baseline. When you smell a knock, I don't care what it looks like, you are getting it down the line. So now to the plate, Jordan Alvarez. As he'll take a breaking ball too low, and it's 1 0. He's hitless in his two at bats so far. A ball and a strike. I know that fastball registered at about 92 93, but I guarantee you it looked about four to five miles an hour faster than that. For this offensive player after coming off a curveball the old push the throttle and pull it is being used can't catch the corner away with the fastball it's two and one from the stretch runner goes pitch swung on and missed the throw it skips in and he's safe close play but he's in there. Well, when a stolen base is that close, it's interesting to check it out on show track. And as the numbers come in, you'll want to focus on the top speed. Really good, and it paid off there. Straw stands at second with no outs. And there's a fastball well off the plate inside. And he goes with the slider here as that misses in tight. It's ball four. Huge innings have begun with much less. I can tell you that. Now First and second, Third no baseman. out. And the guy on the bump now really left. needs a strikeout Frick or a man. double play right here. So it's first and second now. Nobody out. And that'll bring up Alex Bregman. He's set. Here it comes. As he will look at a first pitch fastball for ball one. There are a couple of points in every game that could decide winning or losing. This is one of those critical spots. Time to make some great pitches. In tight. Awfully tight. 2-0 and now. Got to find a way to execute either a good fastball down the way or flip something off speed for a strike. You cannot miss over the heart of the plate in these situations. The hitter is on high alert. Strike called, 2 and 1. You get yourself into count leverage 2 0 right there. You're looking to come unglued on something and be very aggressive. That ball had to nip the corner for him not to pull the trigger on it. The 2 1 waves and misses for strike number two. This is swung on and missed, and boy, they took care of a key man there. One away. Boy, there's nothing like seeing a good power pitcher that has a good fastball. And what does he do? He just throws this good fastball right by, brings the express. No chance to put that ball in play. In now, Kyle Tucker. 
as he'll take a breaking ball in off the plate for ball one. A hit in two at bats for him at this point in the ball game. The 1 0. Well, both of those balls have been inside, so if I'm hitting, I'm looking for something I can get my arms extended on. Probably won't come back inside for a third time. 2 0 count. The pitch is looked at for the first strike. Nasty 2 0 slider right there for a strike. No shame in tipping your hat. The 2 1. Lofted in the air out toward right center. There to play it is Profar, and there are two away. Next up, Yuli Guriel. He's working on a one for three thus far. Trying to hang a zero. Here's the pitch. As he takes a called strike on the black, it's 0 and 1. Now, about a 58 foot breaking pitch that he wisely lays off here. Here's the 1 1. Hey, lots of guys get too aggressive in a spot like this, but he's done a nice job of gaining some count leverage. Look for him to put the ball and play hard. Now the 2 1 will not catch the zone ball three. There isn't a hitter alive that doesn't love hitting in fastball counts like three and one. It's usually a pretty fruitful count in terms of getting a pitch to drive. Hitters count all the way. Here it comes. He loses him on ball four. Oh, that's a walk that could really change the complexion of the game. With the bases loaded, if he gives up a base hit right here, it could get real ugly. Digging in will be Aledmus Diaz. And with every base occupied, a big hit here could really put this one out of reach. First pitch on its way. Strike one to start the at bat. After the walk and with runners on the bags, he couldn't afford to fall behind here. Nice job of jumping ahead with strike one. Bases are loaded here, two down. Another one fouled off, and he's quickly behind 0 and 2. He put himself in a good position jumping ahead 0 and 2 with the bases loaded. Now we'll see if he can finish it off. Oh and two here it is. One ball, two strikes, we can't hear it from here obviously but I think someone in the dugout just yelled wear it because that could have been a run. Fouled away. Not close with the off speed pitch taken for a ball. Here's the two and two. This is on the ground to short. Is he going to get out of this? Oh, he won't get out of it. It's thrown away. One run is scored. Well, we all know that errors happen, but not all errors are equal. That one was especially costly. As two runners cross the plate, those are game changers, no doubt about it. Craig Stammen comes on now looking for the final out of the inning to strand the two runners in scoring position.
Into the box, Jason Castro has the first pitch to him is off the plate for a ball one and oh. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. One and no delivery. Swung on and missed. One and one. one and one. Same pitch that time, the sinker, but it looked like he made a good adjustment with it. Yeah, Matt, that's a great point. Released it from out front much better that yep, time. That I just think he wasn't real happy with the first one he threw, so he wanted to get the field back for it. Set to deliver on two and one. He's fallen behind now, three and one. And remember here there's an open base at first so a walk is not the worst thing that could happen right here. The three and one pitch finds the zone to fill the count three and two. That's a real nice location with that fastball up and in on the hands hard to do much with that because a hitter really can't extend his arms very easily. Payoff pitch home and he misses ball four so he comes out of the bullpen and immediately walks the first man he faces the batter number one shortstop so next to swing the bat will be Carlos Correa he hits here in a spot where he might be able to put this one out of reach yeah Matt down five another run across here could very well put the nail in the coffin mentally they might still feel like they've got a shot if they could get out of this jam though. First pitch of the A.B. on its way. And he puts it on the ground to second. Throw on to first and an important pitch there as they get out of the inning before things explode. So they wind up with two in the inning but it could have been a lot worse as they leave the bases loaded. We have played eight full. It's the Astros five and the Padres nothing. Steve Ciszek comes on from the pen hoping to finish this one off here in the top of the ninth. Set to start the ninth in this one, and set to go is the second baseman, Jake Cronenworth. From the stretch, ninth inning begins as the first pitch is taken for ball one. Now the Astros have somebody up in the bullpen as a right-hander has started to warm up out there. him up over to the left but playable over in foul ground and he'll lunge forward to make the catch for the first out and there are the final numbers for the Astros starting pitcher it was a really nice day on the mound for him a brilliant performance Matty V as a manager and a pitching coach all you can ask for is your pitches to be rock solid and he was in this one only allowing one hit standing in now Fernando Tatis Jr. as the first pitch here's a bit high it's ball one. He could really use a knock here 0 for 3 in the game so far. A ball and a strike. That's the exact spot to lean on as a reliever. As a hitter you just have to tip your cap and look for the next one. One one. That front door slider is a devastating pitch. By the time you realize it's in the zone, it's too late. And you can't even put a good swing on it. Here comes the one two. Misses ball two. Bases are empty. One man out. And 
he fouls this one off. Here's another 2 2. Fouled off. The 2 2 one more time. Gets him swinging. He struck him out. That was a good job there of using the batter's aggressiveness against him. He was putting up a good fight and fouling a lot of balls off. So as a pitcher, it's a great idea to expand the zone even more and make the hitter really chase after something that's even hard to foul off. And in steps Manny Machado as he'll watch a slider that stays inside for ball one. He's hitless in three at bats to this point. Ball and a strike now to Machado. Now a swing and a ground ball. This should do it. Throw to first will be in time to get him. And the Astros are back in the win column again as they take game three of the series, and the ball game is over. 5-0 the final score today. The Strohs jumped out to an early lead in the first and never looked back. Lance McCullers earns win number four on the season as he finishes seven innings allowing only one hit. So that's a wrap for us in this one. Mark DeRosa, Dan Plezak, Heidi Watney, Matt Vaskersian, we all thank you for watching Major League Baseball on MLB Network. See you next time. Fans are final line score this afternoon.